call the meeting to order. Welcome to the Bath Township meeting for February 1st. Well, I know this is going to be a roll call just to make sure everybody's here. So if our deputy clerk, Brenda, could you please do a roll call for me? Mr. Wiswasser? Yes. Mr. Elmerigi? Yes. Mr. Benfee? Yes. Mr. Fewens Bliss? Yes. Hi, Ryan. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Rosecrans? Yes. Thank you. All right, as you can see, our deputy clerk is going to be taking the minutes because our clerk is still ill. She is at home, though. I'm sure Karen can give you a better update. Um, I'm going to do a quick housekeeping. Our information packet for the consent agenda meeting, or mat, you know, for your your matching with the packet. The planning commission's minutes for January 12th of 2021. They are not listed in the agenda. However, they are in your packet. So we're going to, I'll be including those. Next time we'll do it again so that you'll have it. So you'll not only have the minutes again, but it'll also be on the consent agenda. So that was, a, that was pointed out to me that that was an error. So it'll be in the packet and on the agenda. And again, that's your, that would be our January 12th, 2021 minutes. Also, one other thing, in there was an insert, it had to do with a page that dealt with the Charter Township Act. That doesn't need to be there. You can toss that out. Um, that answer had been, that question had been answered and that was an error to have that put in. So just so you know, those are the two items for the consent agenda. Is that okay? All right, so the meeting again, Taylor, I know you've been on vacation and welcome back. I hope you had a wonderful time. We need to have an explanation as to how it is that those who want to join in public speaking, how they do it. Um, yes, so if Thank you. anyone would like to make a public statement when we get to that point, um, you can raise your hand by dialing star nine or you can use the raise hand function um, via Zoom, or you can turn your video on to physically raise your hand, um, and then you will be called on to give your public statement. Any questions? Taylor, thank you again. Appreciate it. She's our communication coordinator, which she does a great job. All right, civil reflections. Okay, Alan, would you please lead us off? Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we'll have a moment of silence. Thank you. We'll have an approval of the agenda. I need a motion. I move we have. And we have some amendments that you put in there. Okay. So if I'm understanding, you're going, your motion, is there a second? Is there a second? I'm assuming Ryan's hand is a second. No, it is not. Okay, which question? I'd like to make some amendments before we approve. Okay, nope, that's for the agenda. Go right ahead. Well, Al's got a motion on the floor, so I don't I want to- I withdraw my motion. Up. Okay. You didn't have So I think it makes sense to actually add the planning commission minutes to the agenda and just approve them since they got distributed. So I would move that we make that change and add that to number five under 8A, adding planning commission minutes from 1-12-21. And then my second request is to add under committee appointments, the board of review. For the consent agenda? No. So you're making, well, only one amendment at a time. 
No, that's my motion is to approve right. the agenda with those two changes. Okay. And you, where do you want the board of review? Under committee appointments number 12. 12. I'll second that. Okay, so we have a second. So if I'm understanding the motion, it would be to accept the approve the minutes, to approve the agenda with those two changes. One being you'll accept the planning commission's meetings, even though it's not on the agenda for 112, and you would like the board of review um, Board of Review Committee <laughs> appointments, correct? Is that how you wanted it, Ryan? Yes. Okay, Trustee Bliss. Under 12, which is the committee appointments. And the second was, Al, you made the second? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, we need record roll call vote. Mr. Wiswasser? Yes. Mr. Amarangi? Yes. Mr. Benzie? Yes. Mr. Thewins Bliss? Yes. Mr. Rose Karen? Yes. Ms. Howe? Yes. All right, number five, is there a disclosure of conflict of interest? Okay, there'll be none at this time. All right, now we're at public statements. Now that's been explained. Do I I don't know if you need to do it again. Do we have anyone with public statements? If anyone would like to make a public statement at this time, you can dial star nine to raise your hand, raise your hand physically if you have your video turned on or use the raise hand function on the Zoom app. And you okay, can go ahead. Like Anne. Okay, hi, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. My name is Ann Elsenheimer. I have lived at 15018 Center Road for 33 years. Like my husband said two weeks ago, our daughters both graduated from Bath Community Schools. I have been a member of the Bath United Methodist Church and was a Girl Scout leader for six years to Troop 31. I have been an employee of Bath Community Schools for 25 years in the Food Service Department. I have enjoyed watching my daughter's sporting events and even though I don't attend anymore, I keep up with the teams now. I enjoy being part of this community and I'm proud to say I am from Bath. This is why I'm speaking now with concern. I am concerned about the events that have occurred during the last township election. You may think my concern is because my husband was not chosen for the board, but if my husband had not run in the election, Bath re residents would not know that an ineligible candidate was left on the ballot and certified as a new trustee leading to the application process that essentially appointed Jason Elmer, Elmer E.G. I would want to make sure as many Bath Township residents as possible are aware of what happened since the board has not made a public statement or explanation. And I want to make sure that it does not happen again. I want to know why the residents of Bath were not informed that one of the candidates wanted to be taken off the ballot. I want to know why it is no one's job to check to see if candidates are qualified to run. I want to know why after public opinion and 3,083 votes from Bath Township voters, the board still refused to appoint Guy Elsenheimer as the new board trustee. I am hoping it is not because Guy ran as a Republican and according to Jason Elmerigi in his December 10th Facebook post on the Bath news page, and I quote, he had no competition on the Republican ticket, so he may actually be an extre extremely bad fit for the board. We now have an opportunity to choose based on quality, not the only option. What a disservice that statement makes to the more than 3,000 residents who voted for Guy and how offensive to Guy to su suggest that he is a bad fit and not a quality candidate when he was able to garner over 3,000 votes against four Democratic candidates. I want to know why Jason Elmerigi did not run in the election in the first place. I want to know if we, the voters of Bath Township, can trust the board to do what is right by us when they cannot do what was right this time. 
They did what four people wanted against the will of 3,083. In closing, I would like to see the board respond to these questions and all residents' questions and concerns as they are raised during your term. And I want you to know I'm going to be here every board meeting to hold the board accountable, accountable to the will of the voters and residents of Bath Township. And I encourage my fellow residents to do the same. We need to make sure the board is doing the right thing. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. Is there another public yes, statement? There is a phone number ending in 040. You can go ahead and dial star six to unmute. Hello, this is Will Tyler White. I see that you have on the agenda uh, only two committee appointments, but you also have on there new business committee appointments, what are we doing, which is great because Apparently, uh, nobody seems to know what you're doing with committee appointments. There's a lot that are vacant, and uh, I've applied to a couple of them, never received a response that it was even received, never received a call back or email back from follow-ups. So mm -hmm. obviously, you have a lot of people there that need to be appointed, and I think it's too much for one person to do. As uh, Al Rosencrantz suggested several meetings ago, it would be better to start at the committee or the lower board level and let the uh, people on those committees make suggestions, do the vetting, interviews, and then recommend those to the supervisor who can then pass on the recommendations if she so chooses. But the big problem, I believe the last speaker also spoke to this, is communications. Uh, I would suggest that you need to have a town hall so all the uh, residents can ask questions and get them answered. There, So far, there's been almost no communication from this new board. In the last two months, there's only been 10 people that have been able to speak at the uh, public remarks. Five of them were speaking on the PUD for the uh, Sunrise Forest, and the other five were speaking in support of uh, Guy Alsenheimer being appointed. Not one person spoke in favor of um, Mr. Almarigi. So if you're going to be transparent, listen to the public and uh, do what your public would like you to do, it might uh, be a good idea to have a nice meeting where you can hear from the public, answer the questions, and let them speak so you know what's going on. I would appreciate that in the future. And uh, thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. White. Is there another one? If anyone else would like to make a public statement at this time, you can dial star nine. You can raise your hand physically if you have your video turned on, or you can use the raise hand function on the Zoom app. <laughs> Fred, go ahead. Hi, I guess I was gonna wait till later, but yeah, I'd, I'd, I would also like to speak on the previous um, talk as well, as far as the appointment. I. Uh, <clears throat> I've gotten some emails back and forth, mostly from Marie and, and Jason Almarigi as well, but it's, it just, I'm not really after um, making a different appointment or something, but I do think that uh, the failure to communicate to, uh, to the residents is, is the problem. And I think it's kind of leaving a, a, maybe a really bad stain on the township or on the perception of the township um, simply because they're not really uh, going for it. So I, I guess I, frankly, I think a, a town hall meeting would be fantastic. I was also going to maybe uh, try to request, and maybe I have to do this through emails because this is supposed to be a, a comment, not a question answer. But um, I think it'd be great if the BOT could put together some sort of a, a presentation or something to say, here's what we did. Here's why we did it. Right or wrong, we did it this way, but we want to come clean uh, and talk to everybody. And maybe there's a fantastic reason for this, and it would make sense. Um, there's quite a few of us out here. We talk on the community page uh, on Facebook or whatnot, but uh, we kind of want to know what's going on. Um, frankly, you know, that's what I, I spoke up at the last meeting. And uh, the first thing you know, I said was, you know, what the heck just happened? Um, because I was, I was rather shocked being at the prior meeting uh, six weeks ago when we kind of spoke about this thing. And there were some other things mentioned about trying to communicate. And then all of a sudden, wham, bam, 
slam this thing's done. I, I'm not saying that anything was done wrong or incorrect or anything to that effect, but I'm saying the perception uh, from the township is, is, is just doesn't really make a lot of sense. So I'd love to see somebody make a presentation of a sort uh, that would say, hey, here's how we did this, so on and so forth. Also on the internet thing, I haven't seen much movement there either. Um, I haven't pushed much more since then, but I would also, that'd be awesome if we could get a, an update of a sort. How could we get a public update, you know, an agenda item that just says, here's where we are, here's where we're going, uh, so that we can at least continue to push on this. I think that I don't know most of the protocols on how to get things done and, and who to contact and when, but um, yes, I can, I can email people individually and get an idea of what happened and why, but that, that just tells me, and, then, and I'm going to be the one to try to turn around and communicate it to the other people. I, I, would, I would much rather see uh, the township itself put together <clears throat> some type of presentation, even if it was a, a, a letter of explanation or something of that effect, I don't know. So anyway, Fred Bowling, Cutler Road, 8256. Uh, everybody have a good week and thank you for listening. Thank you, Fred. Is there anybody else? Would anyone else like to make a public statement at this time? I do not see anyone additional. Okay. All right, I appreciate that, Taylor. All right, our next one would be items from the county, state, federal, or other agencies. Is there anyone? If anyone, oh, yep, yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, phone number ending in 658. Go ahead and unmute by dialing star six. Good evening, board. This is Dwight Washington. Am I heard? Yes. Yes. All right. Good evening, trustees. This is Dwight Washington, um, 4600 Clark Road, Bath, Michigan, Clinton County Commissioner. And I, as I've listened, listening to the comments, I wanted to let you know that one of the things that the county has consistently been focused on is the pandemic and COVID-19. And one of the issues that's been kind of brought up is that about communications and how important that is. And I, I would like to take this opportunity to direct everybody's attention to the Facebook page of the Michigan, Mid-Michigan Public Health Department. And they are trying to provide information as they get it in these changing and trying times. One of the main forms of communication that they're using is the is Facebook. So I hope that those people who spoke in the um, earlier in the public comments are able to link with public link with mid Michigan Department of Public Health and make those connections and help spread the world because that's one of the things that we've prioritized on being safe and uh, making sure that we have kept the numbers as low as possible. And it's while things are escalating and the public seems more and re more relaxed than ever, there is still a big concern out there and, and we're taking precautions and want to encourage other people to take precautions during these times. Um, and other than that, I guess I really wanna emphasize just that we are going through a transition in the public health department as well as other social service agencies are available and encourage the public to keep those in mind. And I'm open for questions. Then I'll thank you and uh, wish everybody to stay safe and uh, be well. Right. Thank you, Dwight. Is there anyone else from? <coughs> Is that okay? All right. We'll move on to our consent agenda as amended. So is that accepted? Is there a motion to accept it? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. As amended. Correct. Did you understand what I just said? Mr. Trustee Benzie? You're I didn't the... understand what you just said, Marie. What did okay. you say? No, I said as amended. Yes, as because, amended. Thank you. Support. Is there a second? Support. 
Okay. Um, I don't, Deputy Clerk, did you get that? There's, yeah. Okay, super. Yeah. All right, do we need a record roll call vote? Mr. Elmer Eg. Yes. Mr. Benzie? Yes. Mr. Thewen Sliss? Yes. Mr. Rosecrans? Yes. Mr. Wiswasser? Yes. Ms. Howe? Yes. All right, we have the approval of the minutes. We need a made motion. I move to approve the minutes. Okay. We need second. a second. I'll second it. Okay, we need a rec record roll call vote. Rose Cran? Yes. Hewins Bliss? Yes. Wiswasser? Yes. Yeah. Al Marigi? Yes. Benzie? Yes. Ms. Howe? Yes. Now here's another piece for you with approval of the vouchers. You can take the voucher out of your consent agenda, which I do believe has been done. I think you have the minutes. The thing that has to be approved is a policy. Is that correct, Ryan? I wanna make sure we're on the same page. No, oh. we already approved the change to the board rules. Okay, when did you do that? Last meeting, you voted yes on it. No, I, I know I voted yes for looking at board, well, whatever. So what we're saying is the vouchers are now out on its own, which is what the treasurer had requested. So apparently that's taken care of according to, I don't remember doing that because it has to lay over a day or a week or a next meeting. The minutes read this, Marie, if this is helpful. Motion by Wiswasser, okay. support by Benzi to amend the board meeting rules of order to remove okay. the vouchers from the consent agenda and make them a separate agenda item. And we had to wait one week or one meeting to do that. No, we took a roll call vote. All five of us voted yes and nobody voted no. No, I understand that. But according to your rules, it says as board members may propose amendments to your board rules at a board meeting, those amendments shall be referred to a subsequent board meeting for action. Amendments to the board rules may not be passed at the same meeting at which they are introduced. That's our policy. So all I'm saying is that at this official meeting, the vouchers are now outside of the board's policy or, or it's not outside the policy. It's now outside the consent agenda and it has its own number. Yeah, okay. we probably should have added the minutes to reflect that that didn't pass then. I understand what you're saying. Okay. Um, all right, our treasurer, Mr. Wiswasser, you want to explain what you need to explain? Frankly, I don't have anything to explain. We, we okay. just need to take and vote on the vouchers separately from the consent agenda, which we all five yes. agreed on and voted on at the last meeting. That's correct. And that it's laid over one meeting now, as you put it. So today's the day, I guess you can take uh, number 10 okay. and you can uh, take approval of the vouchers and you can vote on it. So, we need a record roll call vote for the vouchers and then Go ahead. I need to make a motion first. I'm, I'll make a motion to approve the vouchers, please. Thank you. Second. And Alan, we have a second. Any discussion on it? I think we've already done that, so we need a vote. Record roll call vote. You and Bliss? Yes. Rosecran? Yes. Wisswasser? Yes. Elmer E.G.? Yes. Benzi? Yes. How? Yes. Thank you. The only thing that I was talking about, Steve, with item 11, dealing with your treasure report, has to do with the audit. Okay, what, what does that have to do with the vouchers? Vouchers have passed. Okay. Are we on the treasurer's report now? That's correct. All right, you've all received a uh, agenda the same as what I have here. Um, the only thing I'm going to say to you is, is there were 17 RFPs that were sent out. Uh, we have seven proposals that was received back by the deadline. 
Um, we doesn't, the treasurer doesn't need a vote up or a vote down. The treasurer needs you to accept the proposal as written and we need to take and move on by no later than the February 16th meeting. We are getting tight on time. Um, the, everybody I believe who I've been told has received a copy of all the uh, proposals that we've received from the seven different auditors. I look forward to talking to you more about this. Uh, if you want to call me during the week, that's fine. Between now and the 16th, I have some, I've narrowed it down to a couple, um, actually three, um, but I would like to do some more checking um, on some other stuff. I'd like to talk with accounting staff and I'd like to know what their opinion is on some of this. And there's also some websites you can get on and you can actually get out and you can look at these um, people who have sent in proposals and you can see what type of work they do and if they have any issues or if there's anything, any legis anything litigation pending and things like that for what their, their work that they do. Um, we need about another four or five days to look into this see what's going on and then I'm open to, to everybody that's next team uh, coming up with a idea of what they think there's a vast majority uh, there's a big wide uh, spot here as far as the the cost um, you, you can go all the way from the top of the line down to the what about what we paid normally um, we need to keep in mind as everybody on the board knows we hire Maynard and Kasterson as our accounting firm um, that was done prior back 19 or 2006 when the Municipal Finance Act changed and required us because we was over $350 million for SEV, we had to take and have an on-staff accounting firm on, on staff. Um, quite a few townships did that at that time. We still do that. Um, so we get a lot of service from our accounting staff. We essentially get audited twice, which I feel good about because that way there's not a lot missed everything gets looked at the same um and and like i said i need to talk to Aaron stevens our point person from maynard just a little more about a couple of three of these firms and i'm looking forward to hear back i know ryan you wanted to talk to me a little bit or you wanted to look into this some more so i'm looking for all seven of the of the board members to take and step up and tell me what you think that's about all i got marie no marie, i no. appreciate that information Hopefully everybody will have a chance. I've myself have done two of them. I don't know, got four more to go, five more to go um, to be able to look at. So yes, the treasurer's done a very good job on this. Um, thank goodness it's seven as opposed to 17. Uh, that helps, but reading it through, he's definitely you know been able to make it easier. And he just explained the rest of you. I'm sure he's done that one-on-one -on -one with them. So, we don't need a, a call. This was information that our treasurer was giving us. However, you are going to need to have the vote on the 16th of February so that, you know, we'll be picking a new auditor by that time. Okay. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate that. All right. Number 12. This is one that Ryan had spoke to about our committee appointments. And that's correct. There are two that have been listed. One of them is new, and that's Ms. Kendra Howard, and the other appointment is, is Mr. Dan Kramer. So I guess we, I, I'm not sure exactly what you all would like to do if you want to break this up, or if you want to do the planning commission as one. And I don't, Jace, Mr. Amarigi, uh, I move to Hi. accept Dan Kramer's uh, appointment to the Planning Commission. So you do, so the point is you want to separate them? Yes. Okay. I'll second it. And that's the second? I assume that's an expiration date of December 31st, 2023? Yes, he has a three-year appointment. Is there any other questions? All right, we'll do a record roll call vote. Ewan Bliss? Yes. Rosecram? Yes. Wisswasser? Yes. Elmerigi? Yes. Benzi? Yes. And how? Yes. All right, now that leaves Miss Kendra Howard. Oh, I got a hand coming up. Sorry, I was going to move to the next one. 
Nope, because we haven't finished with, we need a record roll call vote if we have a motion. Am I assuming then there's no motion for Ms. Howard? Okay, our next one then your board of review. Yes, I uh, would like to move the appointment of the following five people to the board of review with expiration of their term uh, December 31st, 2022. Mr. Robert Leiby, Mr. Herbert Gibbs, Ms. Janine Brown, Mr. Jeff Seeley, and Mr. John Finley. All reappointments. They are all reappointments. And I did have a new appointment for that. Seems how this is my supposed to be, I'm supposed to be appointing to the board with their approval for that. You can certainly do that. But I do have a question with the new appointee, which was Patty Thomas. So my assumption is, Ryan, that you're not in favor of a new appointment. My motion was just to reappoint the five current people. And I'm asking you a question with regards to the new appointment. Your motion is to reappoint the five, and I'm asking about the new appointment. There's five slots, and so my, I'm, my motion is for the five reappointments. So you're going to, so there is no appointment for the new one. Correct. I just made a motion to reappoint the five people. And we need a second for discussion. Okay, now discussion. And my discussion will continue. So with your reappointment of the five, which I agree up to a point, but one of them, we have a new appointment. And that was Patty Thomas for the Board of Review. And my assumption is that all of you are, because I can't get a motion, or can I get a second with and Ryan's motions on the floor for the five, which means that the new appointment, I guess I will be asking you for a record roll call vote for the new appointment. So for the five who have been appointed, we need a record roll call vote. Ms. Wasser? Yes. Yeah. Elmerigi? Yes. Benzi? Yes. Ewan's Bliss? Yes. Rosecrans? Yes. How? No. I'm going to say no only because of the reappointment. For the, for the appointment for the new one. Now we'll need a record roll call vote if you brought up the board of review, which I didn't submit for that. I have the new person, Patty Thomas, which most of you are very familiar with her. She has a background of financing. And so I'm gonna ask for a record roll call vote. There's no motion. <laughs> there won't be a motion. In order for us to vote, there has to be a motion in a second. And so the refusal is that there'll be no motion for the new appointee, Patty Thomas, correct? Well, there's five board of review slots and we just reappointed all five. I understand that. And now I'm saying, all right, you've, you've made your decision. So thank you. So the next one then that takes care of your reappointments, you've gone ahead and done that for the Board of Review, which is really good because it's very timely. And we've reappointed Mr. Kramer and we've taken a record roll call vote for Ms. Howard and you've said no, so that works. So our township committee, there you go. <laughs> Judy, I know you've been very patient. I appreciate that. Our township committee report is from our senior center advisory committee. Ms. Judy Gardy, who is the chair. Go ahead, Judy. Judy, you can unmute. Don't need. There you go. Hey, Judy. Yep, she, go. Did, she did, fixed it. Thank you. Um, good evening. Um, as Marie said, my name is Judy Gardy, and I chair the Senior Services Advisory Board. And first of all, I want to thank you all for your service to our community and for the time on the agenda tonight. Um, the purpose of my uh, presentation tonight is um, <clears throat> one, to provide you with an update on this senior center. Um, two, to request the appointment of two additional board members. We have seven slots, we only have five board members. 
Um, and thirdly would be to request a liaison from the board to the senior services advisory board. Um, the work of the senior center is um, your work. Ultimately, the senior center is the responsibility of the board of trustees and it would be great if we could have a liaison from the board to the senior services advisory board. And lastly, um, I will request at the end of my presentation that action be taken on your part to hire a full-time senior center director at this time. As far as an update on the senior center, I think it's important not only for you to know, but for the rest of the community that's listening to the uh, board meeting tonight that we have uh, been uh, and continue to serve our seniors um, even during the pandemic. Um, since the week after we shut the senior center down, we have in partnership with the Tri-County Office on Aging um, served over 23,000 meals to seniors in our community. Um, those meals included uh, entree, fruit, bread, and milk. So um, one of the first priorities that we saw is continuing to feed our seniors with proper nutrition. Those meals are picked up once a week um, in the senior center parking lot right here in Bath. We provided Thanksgiving meal gift cards to over a hundred of our seniors in the Bath community, as well as Christmas gift bags, which included canned hams. Those gift bags were delivered door to door to um, over a hundred seniors in our community as well. Recently, our cook um, has started coming into the senior center a few hours a week. She checks emails, makes wellness calls to people that we know are I'm not doing too well, sends birthday cards and manages our medical equipment lending program. As you know, seniors are the most vulnerable of our population when it comes to the pandemic. 14% of the population in Bath Township is 65 or older and, all, and they are all eligible to be vaccinated at this point in time. Our seniors are lonely, isolated, anxious, and suffering from a lack of socialization. And for many of them, transportation is a huge issue. They also have little access, if any, to the internet. And right now to get vaccinated, you have to go online if you wanna use the district health department for your vaccination. You have to go on to a Sign Up Genius. From the Sign Up Genius, you have to go to a form you have to fill out the form, you have to submit the form, you have to confirm that the form was submitted, and then you have to wait for an email to get your appointment. Many of our seniors do not have connectivity with the internet and are not really proficient in using the internet. We um, at the Senior Center can help them, should help them get vaccinated. Um, we can only do this with a director and that person has to be highly organized, an excellent communicator, motivated, and a good team player. I have personally spoken to the person in the Mid-Michigan District Health Department responsible for our pandemic response. Um, he knows that the Senior Center is available for a, vaccine, a vaccination clinic. Um, they, the um, Health Department, have offered to send the National Guard to us to help vaccinate our seniors. Um, they, the health department feels that the closer the vaccination clinic is to where people live, the more likely it is that they're going to go there to be vaccinated. Vaccinate, vaccine needs to be available. Right now, we do not have supply, and you all know that. Um, but this means that we actually have some time to get organized, to develop um, the, the, the outreach effort, the campaign, if you would, if you would. Um, to reach out to our seniors and to bring them the information that they need to help them get organized, get registered, get vaccinated. Um, so my request on part of the Senior Services Advisory Board is to ask the board to move forward um, with us and to see that we get a senior center director hired um, as soon as possible to begin to help our seniors get vaccinated. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. We appreciate that report. We're going on to item 15. Oh, uh, you have a question? Does anyone have any questions? There you go. Thank you, Murray. 
No, it's, uh, I think I, there's two. I, I agree with Judy. Uh, I think it's time to uh, move forward on this issue and uh, hire a director so we can start to provide the services that we do provide for our seniors. Al's got his hand up. He does. Go ahead, Al. That's uh, Mr. Rosecrans. Like he's on the agenda for next meeting Correct. so that we can uh, advise Karen to uh, go ahead with looking for a new director. Okay. So I, I think, Ann, did you have your hand up? <coughs> okay. Judy, is that, what? What Marie, is, I would just say that the Senior Services Advisory Board is available to help with developing right. a specific position description, which we already have at the at the yes. um, township level, or to even assist in hiring. This that you gave me, that, that you sent me, is this something that you think would be advantageous for the remainder of our trustees to have? I sent them to. I sent it to the trustees. It's just oh, kind okay. of an out my outline on what the work of. Right. Beginning to vaccinate our seniors at uh, through the through the pandemic would would look like. Okay, nope, sounds good. Trustee Bliss, yes. So with this being a position that's already been created, we don't need to take any action at the board level to encourage Karen to move on hiring. Is that true? Um, we can recommend that she go, go ahead. But we probably don't have to have a motion on that, just consensus. That's what I was thinking. Recommendation is an important thing to do because that's a new employee. And that's something that the board is responsible, even though that was given to our superintendent, we still have a responsibility of thinking that through and working through it. We can certainly vote on this. I don't have a problem with that. So do you want to vote on it now or do you want to wait the week until the next meeting, 16th? I advocate that we, we don't vote on it. If we're right. all in agreement, Karen already has the power to do that. Yeah. I think if we start dabbling in Karen's ability to manage her own staff, it, <laughs> it's a slippery slope. I would agree with that, Ryan. I don't think there was any telling, any dabbling we were doing. I think it's a matter of if that's something that you've already discussed before, before I got here, then yeah, you're absolutely correct. The position exists. And from what sure. I understand, okay. if positions don't exist, the board needs to take the action to create the position. But once they are in existence, Karen, as the staff leader, right. has the right to hire and fire as she sees fit. Exactly. So the position is already there. Yes. So what do, what do you need to do to fill it? Just let Karen know. Are you there? You are, Karen. Let, let Karen fill it. Do you hear yes, that, I'll Karen? Just, I'll just, uh, yes, thank you. I'll proceed with filling. Okay. I think, Judy, that's a done deal. It sounds like. Mur Mur Murray. Yes. It's a treasure list losser. If yes. I may, um, I'm not finding fault here with your. Um, um, agenda, but for years since they've had a superintendent here, they've always had on the agenda a hiring update, and that seems to be missing on your agenda. Um, this is part of her, her job, and, and she could actually give you an update on what, if, if it was included in this agenda, you could actually get an update. That's where that would fall under, um, if there was, if they were going to hire staff, um, then I believe that's been on there for a long time, but a hiring update would be a good thing to add to your agenda with your new agenda that you, you've taken over here. No, I understand that completely. I had no idea that this is what we were going to do tonight to hire. The, I know it was going to be mentioned. It, it, it doesn't but, matter whether you're doing okay. it tonight or not. You should, no. you, the superintendent should be able to give you an update as, as they always have before. Uh, on, a, on, on the hiring update okay. we go for all departments and everything going on in all the departments. That, that's the purpose of having the superintendent on the agenda so she can update you on this stuff and tell you her opinion of where she's at and why 
and, and that, that's part of the of the superintendent's position that should be on the agenda. That's all I'm saying. No, I, I understand that. I, if I knew it was going to be there. So are you ready when you do your superintendent report, Ms. Hildebrand, to be able to update us? Sure. Okay, well, that's part of the superintendent's report then, as she's hearing the discussion that's taking place. And for me, that's the first time the discussion's taken place. So apparently, am I right with that, Treasurer Wiswasser, or is there I, something I'm missing? I, I have no idea. I just know that it's missing on this agenda. This is the first time I've yeah. seen an agenda that doesn't have that on there. Um, but we typically always have a, from the superintendent, we always have on her part of her, of the agenda, we have a sure. hiring update or anything else. Sometimes it would be um, in the past, maybe there may be, not be any, any update on anything, but there may be something coming down the road. There may be something um, that, that we don't know about. That's why we hired okay. her to do this. Okay, no, so what, if I'm understanding and bear with us, trustee bliss, we're gonna do some, some of this kind of thing. If I'm understanding what you're saying then, the superintendent needs to let me know, or I just should automatically have it on the agenda. It should be on the agenda. That's okay. part of her job. Yeah. Okay. And then if there's no hiring update, then we just ignore it. Right. It, it has nothing okay. to do with any of the board members or you. It has to do with nope. the superintendent. Nope. Understand. Thank you. It's greatly appreciated. All right. Again, Ms. Gardy, thank you so much for the report. That was greatly appreciated. We have uh, number 14, which is unfinished business. There doesn't appear to be any. Our new business, which is 15. And this is for discussion only. So I want you to understand that there's no vote with any of these. This, this is discussion. So I'm very glad to see that. Where'd he go? Oh, Kevin, you're there. But that'll be, be after we do committee appointments. I'm looking for some input. Apparently you've already given it to me, but I need to make sure I'm understanding. Go ahead, Trustee Robeson-Krantz. I would like to see a board member be put on each committee. I'm sure you would, okay. And your reason being? We need to have somebody to be able to bring it back to us, to the, the person bring back the information to the board that how the committee is uh, doing and what they need. Okay. Nope, appreciate that input. Anyone else? Murray, I got one for you. Okay. Tre tre Treasurer Wisselwasser here again. Yes. Oh, I, I would like to see you uh, decide what you're going to do with your DDA. Uh, it's imperative it's... that you think about what you're gonna do. I'm gonna give you an example. And, okay. uh, uh, 13 days now, they have two tax bills that's due that have to be paid. And either you're either going to take and pay your taxes or you're not. I have the authority as the treasurer because I'm also the treasurer of the DDA okay. to take and pay these tax bills, but you have not got a DDA board to decide uh, to say yes or no or to prove the voucher. The, the DDA board is a component of our township audit. And I, it doesn't look good for the treasurer just to go out and pay the taxes and not have an approval from a city seated board. Unfortunately, we don't have a seated board. So you really need to decide whether you're gonna get in the DDA business here or you're not gonna get in the DDA business. And if you are, you gotta get some people on it. And in 13 days, there's gonna be a late fee. There'll be a 3% interest as it did these taxes that's owed. And uh, I, I'll have the option of waiving them which I probably could legally if I, I'm the treasurer and the tax rolls of my name, but I don't think that's a very good way of doing business. We need to take and figure out what we're doing with the DDA. Thank you. Appreciate that. They have two parcels. I might add, they have, in case anybody's wondering, they do own two parcels of property, so they Correct. get the tax bills. Thank you. No, my, my question with this would be, what did you do historically? Oh, hang on, Jason, just a second. Treasurer Wiswasser? Well, historically, you would have had a DDA meeting and the treasurer would have brought it to the DDA and they would have approved the vouchers. No, and, what have you been and, doing historically? 
That's what we, I just told you that. Okay. Historically, you would have had a DDA meeting. The treasurer would have brought the, the tax bills to the DDA along with any other vouchers they may have or money they would have spent and they would have approved them vouchers. For the treasurer to just go ahead and pay these tax bills out of the DDA's funds is not very transparent. You should have a DDA board or you should, the township board should decide to do away with the DDA, one or the other. I don't really have, um, I'm, not, I'm not promoting one or the other. Only thing I'm telling you is, is I'm promoting that we need to do things in accordance to what the rules of order are for taxation and they have two tax bills that need to be paid. So you, you need to think about how you want to move forward with this. If you want to have an EDA, then you better get around and appoint a DDA board. I'll waive the fee for a few days till the 16th. But, but the bottom line is, is that you need to take and decide what you're doing here because it's 3% interest and that adds up and that's part of settlement with the County treasurer. So you got to decide what you're going to do. Okay. No, I, I couldn't agree more with that. I just don't know what historically what you've done. We paid so our bills historically, a... Marie. That's what no. we do here in BAP. We pay our bills. No, what I'm, okay, Steve. What I'm saying to you is apparently was the DDA functioning at the time of the last tax bill? Maybe that's the way to put it. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Trustee Armour. I'm Rigi. Go right ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> I, I just I, I wanted to I, I just kind of remind us where we are with committee reappointments. Okay. Um, this information is based on what's posted on the township website and it includes okay. both um, regular appointments as well as I, I board representatives. So I uh, among the 15 committees that we have in our township, um, there are 95 seats. According to my count, I may be off a couple. Nope, but you're close. Uh, we have 51 current vacancies. Every committee has a vacancy. Nine of the 15 have over 50% of their seats listed as vacant. And so they're, obviously, they're either vacant or they're filled by carryover. Um, that's 54% of all seats. Mm -hmm. So um, since you've taken the helm uh, as our supervisor, you've put before us 12 names. That doesn't include uh, two board names. Um, uh, and we've only been presented with five app applications in the past two board meetings. Mm -hmm. And so um, two things. Uh, one, I, I'd love to hear in very clear um, terms uh, what your strategy is. What, okay. what is your plan? Um, I personally am, am very worried about the functioning of our township when there are so many vacancies uh, present uh, and not much being put before the board. And so I know you have questions as to why, you know, uh, we brought up additional appointments that were not on this agenda. I think we feel an urgency that we need to staff our committees. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'd like to say. Okay. Let me start out very clear, very plain, so it's completely understood because this is the first time that I've actually been asked that short of committee members that I have and chairs that I've talked with. What I have looked at from day one has been one assignment, one appointment for one committee. I have for a long time not understood why there are three committees for one person or even two committees for one person because Bath Township has more than enough people to fill that. If that means I need to stop knocking on doors, then I start knocking on doors. I have submitted since December, six new members. It's correct, that's a smaller number. That's a good place to start as far as I'm concerned. And since December, they have been dismissed. Now, apparently this is what part of the plan is. And people have talked to me and I've talked to chairs and yes, they are getting a little panicky and I'm getting a little panicky. Part of my job is to appoint these members. And then part of your job is to accept or reject. 
that's understood. I'm having a hard time myself with the idea that there are those who disagree that there aren't enough people in Bath to fill these committees. I think there are. I think that with the, for example, the Board of Review that we just went through, there are definitely people who can be appointed to that, who have been there for a long time, planning commission, same way. Um, any of our other committees, I have a whole list, it's on my wall. So I do know the percentages and I do know what's going on with them. What I don't understand is the reluctancy to have new people put on. That I'm having a really hard time with. Those who have been on and have served, have served well. But when you expire, you expire. That's your term. So then the job, my life would be so much easier just to reappoint everybody or to appoint to your committees as you're speaking of as a, as a new trustee. And I fully understand that. So I hope there's not a misunderstanding of my direction of what I've been trying to do. And that is number one, bring as many people as I can into the community, into our committees. I don't think that's a bad thing to do. So my appointments that I've been making have all been new people that have not, who are very strong, very good, and they do their jobs quite nicely. So that's an issue, but that's been rejected. So consequently, it's almost like this Mexican standoff, if I wanna make a racist comment, um, where it's my appointments versus your acceptance of my appointments. And that is hurting Bath Township, no question. It's absolutely hurting Bath Township. It's hurting our committees. I'm sorry for that, but I still believe there are enough people here in this township to be able to fill those positions. I'm only starting with six because I don't want the rest of the individuals who are going to be appointed to go through what these six have had to go through. Trust me, these six are pretty strong, these five are pretty strong people. I wouldn't have appointed them or asked for them to be on these committees if I had thought for one minute that they couldn't, which doesn't mean that the rest couldn't, but they're not being filled. They're not being accepted. We're accepting, and what you want to accept, which would make my life so much easier, is everybody just who's been there, whether you've on three committees, whether you're on two committees, whether you've been there for 15 years or 20 years, your term expires, you just go ahead and appoint. How easy could that be? Go ahead, Jason. So, I mean, what I hear you saying is uh, you want to create more inclusive committees that represent uh, all individuals in Bath. You want to introduce new ideas uh, uh, through those appointments. Is that a fair description of I what think your that's goal a, is? I think that's a fair description. I could have said that myself, but no, you said it quite nicely. That's exactly what I'm looking to do. Um, now, are you gonna tell me I can't do it because I don't have enough people? No, go right ahead. Um, what, I'm, what I'd like to say is I, I, many of us on the board, I would say all of us on the board are on board with working towards that. I, two of us, I think, do this professionally. Um, and so I think the challenge that you're facing is that you're looking to create inclusive committees, but you're doing it through non-inclusive processes. You, you are, you're pointing out it's mm -hmm. your job to make the appointment, and it's our job to either accept or reject. I think that there might be different ways in which you can bring us to speed with your, your, your applicants, why they're a good fit, uh, and allow us to have voice in that process. Yes. You're assuming that we don't want change. You're assuming that we want static committees. And what I'm saying is that that is not true at all. And so there's many things that we need to figure out here. One is mm -hmm. we have uh, uh, people who have graciously donated their time for years mm -hmm. and years and years. Um, 
they hold vast amounts of institutional knowledge or corporate knowledge, whatever term you want to use. We need to leverage that. That is important information so that we don't recreate the road. And so introducing some new folks while having a, a, a seasoned members of committees uh, continue to serve builds bridges. It helps transfer knowledge. Uh, second, I, when you contacted me about one committee per person, mm -hmm. um, you know, my comment to you was, what is your plan to maintain uh, communication across committees? Mm -hmm. um, and that's hugely important. Without communication across committees, you have silos. Silos operating uh, uh, together, um, I, you know, step on each other's toes. Uh, they duplicate efforts. They don't share resources. And so one avenue that Bath has traditionally used for communication across committees is cross committee appointments. Um, whether that was by design or whether that's just how it has evolved. Um, that is important. That's a, it's the same rationale why having a board member on committees is important because communication can go back and forth. Um, and so, I, so those are my bits of advice. I've got lots more advice, but I don't want to take the whole floor. Nope, and, and that's greatly appreciated. However, we just heard Ms. Gardy, who, who is the chair, for the senior center, she made a report that can be done each week if that's what you want from all 15, if that's necessary. However, there's a number of ours that don't meet, but maybe with luck twice a year. But there are committee members who can make these reports. My issue, go, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Um... I'd kind of like to weigh in here on the reappointment piece. The reappointment of our existing committee members protects our corporate memory. Mm -hmm. And I really support mm -hmm. uh, the corporate memory. They're very, yes. very important. Yep. Also, in some cases, some of those committee members have served on a couple committees. And that's been very, very important for communication in Bath Township. So I'll leave you with that. That's, I, I support that. Mm -hmm. No, I, I appreciate that. I don't. I mean, that's, that's where we end up from the simple reason for me, and you're absolutely correct. I'm, I'm the one who always has talked about institutional knowledge. It is a crucial piece. But what also is a crucial piece is that you bring on new, fresh ideas. Everybody starts at the bottom. You started at the bottom. I started at the bottom. Years we built. That's how we kind of function. It's the same kind of thing with our committees. But you need new people coming in to be able to learn, take the place, because one of these days, they're going to be the older person who's there, who has that institutional knowledge. If you continue to bring in fresh blood and new people that's coming in, you're bringing in new ideas, new things that are happening. Let me speak to that. Sure. There are plenty of, of our people that are very veteran and have served in multiple Absolutely. spots. Well, and once you fill those spots, there's going to be ample opportunity to bring in new blood. There'll be, there'll be room for other people. Our reappointing some of our veteran people that have served for a long time is very, very important to our mm -hmm. future. When, when would you propose to bring in other people? Well, when, they, when people resign. Oh. And There's if, lots of change, Marie, in the okay. next four years. Okay, so... We're going to wait for someone who's on three committees to resign from two of them and then get to a point. Or we're going to wait until someone decides, or they're going to die. You know, we're all going to die um, before they end up having someone new on a committee. There's Am I understanding ample, that? There's going to be ample room with the numbers that we need for new people. As long as someone resigns or someone? Well, first of all, some of the people that are serving are not going to come back. There are very, very few 
the Housing Commission has one that resigned. There'll be openings. So the, the five or six that I appointed are of no consequence. I didn't say that. Jason. Well, no, that, that's the new blood. No one has, has resigned from these committees. So there is no new blood. I'm, I'm sorry, Brian, go ahead. I know we're gonna beat this to death and I don't want to, but. No, I think it's really important that we have this conversation. It is important. Uh, I think I think from experience, I would agree with what Joe is saying. We, since I have been on the board the first time, we constantly had a turnover in uh, people applying for the committees. We had folks who would get too busy. Unfortunately, folks, to your point, had passed away. We just had constant turnover. What we didn't have is a constant flow of people who were submitting uh, resumes and submitting applications to be on the board. So I think that's helpful if we have a, a large body, of, a large number of bodies that want to be appointed. I think that's really, really helpful. Uh, I think to your points earlier, okay. you made the comment that no one had asked you about your, your vision yet. I think it's important to understand that as the person doing the recommending, it's really incumbent upon you to bring that information to us as you're looking to a point. You're asking for us to buy into your strategy. And I think we're all seemingly willing to do that. We just haven't heard it put together until tonight. So it's really, really helpful to mm -hmm. hear what it is you're thinking and how we might be able to support you in that. So I, I would end with a, a question. Do, do you currently have a cadre of you know, 35, 40 people oh, no. who mm -hmm. are ready to be placed on boards? No. And my so reason for that long, is I stopped. I stopped looking because I am not going to put them through what these five or six have gone through. It's just not going to happen. There's no sense in bringing people into the community to be humiliated or need to, and they have been, and need to be turned down and need to be told nobody really wants me there, which has been part of the comments. I don't know how to answer them. I, I, I really don't know how to answer them. Well, and my yes, I have, how to answer oh. them is how you have been saying it to us. Your job is to recommend and our job is to approve or not. Exactly. So I think that's what you're getting at here. If we don't have a okay. cadre of people and you're unwilling to put folks up for reappointment, our committees are going to wither and die. And the folks whose terms have not expired are going to leave because they've got other professional and personal opportunities to attend to. So I think at least for me, it would be helpful to have a, a larger scope of the idea. So we've got, you know, X amount available on the Parks and Rec Committee, and you have, you know, three applications in hand. That would help us understand the scope of it. Right now, it feels, based on the information we've been mm -hmm. provided, is there's about 35 to 40 openings, and, and they will yep. trickle in for when we appoint people, but many of them can't meet because they don't meet quorum until then. So what you're saying, to make sure I'm understanding, if I make sure that there's a quorum, and some of our committees do have quorums, then the group of you would be willing to look at new voices, new people, as long as these committees have quorums and can continue to operate. I don't think I'm saying exactly okay. that. I, I think so, all of us are willing to look at new people all of the time and, and anybody can disagree with me. I don't mean to speak on behalf of everyone. No, I understand. Uh, but it's helpful to know that you have an idea for an entire community or excuse me, entire committee. So if Parks right. and Rec has four openings and you wanna reappoint two of them and you've got two new folks in hand, that helps give us an idea of what you're trying to do with the committee as a whole. To individually put one person on a committee at this point, still with them not having the ability to meet because they don't have quorum, isn't very effective in moving things along. And I think we'll demoralize the new people we bring in because they're not actually taking any action. They're not meeting because they can't. Okay. When you speak of, when, when you speak of, now make sure I'm understanding this. Again, no, I stopped asking people. 
because none of mine were being accepted. Okay, Let, let's start there. What you're saying is that you need to appoint individuals who have already been there, whose terms have expired. So I need to make sure that they're satisfied so that the committee can continue to go. I'm supposed to go out and ask people to sit and wait their time to be on the committee. In other words, and I'm, I'm not trying to be facetious, I'm trying to be realistic. So if I go to people and say, will you please be on a committee for the senior center, but you're gonna have to wait until something comes up, is that? No, is that let me just okay. say, uh, I'm not the supervisor, I know I'm not, but if I was you, what I would communicate to people is, this is the process. Everyone puts in an application, you check off okay. the, the people or the organ, excuse me, the committees that you're interested in serving on, and then recommendations will be brought to the board for consideration. Having served under other supervisors before, they, they would not guarantee folks are going to be appointed because frankly, none of us have that individually That's power correct. to do that. So, you know, that would be my recommendation is as you're recruiting folks, say there's a process. And sometimes folks will apply for a committee that doesn't have an opening and they might have to wait. But you know, in my five time, five years previously serving, we constantly appointed new people. I mean, all the time we were appointing new people. So I, I don't think it, it is true that we wouldn't ever get new people in. Okay, then I, I understand what you're saying, and I understand you know that maybe you could get people to sit and wait that length of time. I'm I'm not sure. I'm not sure I can ask them for their process to wait a long time because what you're saying is you're hire, you're you're appointing these people for three or four years, and I guess if we wait for somebody to decide they want to resign, then we just wait for them to resign and somebody moves up or their approval is there. If you had that kind of turnover during the time that you were there, somebody should have been looking at what was wrong because that kind of turnover means that something's not right. If you were appointing constantly for committees, something couldn't have been right at that time. But having said that, having said that, I'm still gonna go back and I really, really appreciate the input because this is a terribly, terribly important piece for us to be talking about. I've never had a problem with appointments and I've talked to people, even your board of review, I've talked to people, even planning commission, I've talked to people and said, this is gonna happen. This is what you're gonna do. Don't worry too much, it's, it's gonna happen. You will be appointed to this committee because I believe that's right. Institutional knowledge is crucial, but it's also crucial to have new fresh blood coming in. The park and recs that you continue to bring up, that's not what I'm hearing here in, in this desk, in this seat about parks and recs. So, and, and DDA is very much the same thing. Historically, and I understand Steve, and I really, really appreciate the treasurer's input with that. That one is a, a, a toughie to do. That's as tough as a planning commission. Planning commission and ZBA, your zoning board and DDA. Those are really tough committees. They have to be people who are willing to work. They have to be committed to it. And they have to have at least an opportunity or an operation of understanding what's going on. I'm not sure that's been the case with the DDA since its conception because, or inception, whichever way you wanna look at it. My growing up in the legislature with DDA communities has taught me a lot of what a DDA is all about. And I certainly appreciate Will's comments that he's made with that. And I appreciate what's going on with these committees and you can continue to do what you're doing, you know, by bringing them up and, you know, appointing and doing whatever. That certainly is your, your prerogative to do so. And if that's what you want, then keep moving along. Go ahead, Jason. I, I just, I, I wanna ask for clarification. Okay. Um, I, it, 
you, you mentioned twice that um, you stopped soliciting applications because That's of your, okay. So I guess I'm, 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 I'm not quite sure about how to move forward here. Um, That's a good question. I, and so, you know, where we can make appointments as individual board members, it sounds like we should start thinking about that. I've because thought about moved. it for a long time, yes. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. No, you're, you're right on point. That has never been an issue. Yes, go ahead, Ryan. I just will add one more piece to this to clarify. There's constant turnover because people's terms expire every year. So every year, each board has people who term out. We're not appointing everybody for four years on every board. So at the end of this year, there will be people who term out. At the end of That's next correct. year, there will be people who term out. That's why there's turnover, not because there's anything wrong within the township. People just decide at the end of their term not to come back. So that's where we have the constant ability to, to do this is at least once a year. Obviously, things happen in people's lives and they, they can make choices before their term is up. But we're guaranteed the opportunity to have openings at least once a year when people's terms come up. I appreciate that. Is there any other comments on the committees? From my standpoint, as the one who is responsible for doing this, I definitely understand that you're looking for quorums for people to be able to do. That certainly has never been, for me, an issue with the appointments for those who have served. I'm sorry, I can hear somebody. Am I missing something? Okay, apparently not. All right, so this discussion has been very helpful for me. I don't know if it has been for you. I hope it's clear. I asked for some kind of an organizational meeting a long time ago, but we really need an organizational, an organization, an organizational meeting. I'm going to use this time again for this kind of thing because it's really good that all of us are together in trying to discuss what's going on. So I thank all of you for the time. We have, we took it there the minute, the minutes. Can I ask I'm, one more question before we sure. go? Sure. I, I just want to make sure I, I'm really clear because mm -hmm. I, I want to be clear on this. So if this is not what you're saying, Madam Supervisor, please feel free to, to correct me. Are you saying that you are not going to recruit new committee members nor bring up anyone for reappointment unless we accept Ms. Howard to the Planning Commission? I don't think I said that. Right, that's why I'm clarifying. Right. But you don't want you you see all, I, all I'm saying. All I'm saying to you is she's a very very good candidate for the Planning Commission. That, that has been, you know, she's been talked to. A couple of people, she has a great background. Actually, her background was in the DDA, but she didn't want that, which is understandable um, because she knows how very difficult that is. The Planning Commission, yes, she would be a very, very good fit, but you've already decided from this last discussion that we had that that's not something that you want. So, so then you are going to move forward with recruiting and, and reappointing. I will, I will move forward. The, the appointments, see, the reappointment thing is always an interesting term. The, their terms, for the most part, have expired. The appointment to the committee is something that they should take very serious, and they do. They're, you have, Bath Township's very fortunate. They have an awesome group of people who do spend their time. They give up time from their family. They give up the personal time. We've all been, you know, we've just said that numerous times. They are greatly, greatly appreciated. But there are times when, when a term expires that that individual, no matter where you do, hopefully they'll move to a different committee if that's something that they want to stay engaged, you know, with it. I would love to see that. Yes, I will look at 
and go back through my list, which is sitting on my wall, because I look at it all the time. Uh, in fact, you can see it right there. Um, if that's what the pleasure of the board is, to be able to make sure that they're functioning and being able to say they can do their work on the promise, and this is a promise, guys, so pay attention to what I'm saying, that you seriously, I mean really seriously, look at new appointments coming in. Now that means when a term expires, somebody's going to have to go. Nobody likes that. That's not the point. The point is what's best for Bath Township. And what's best for Bath Township is new blood coming in. Go ahead, Mr. Rosencrantz. I'd like to uh, have you look at the road committee. We, uh, besides myself and Joe mm -hmm. and Jason, uh, are on the road committee. We're going to have, we've only got, I think, two members that are still seated. Uh, we have our contract coming up. Yep, you do. County, and we need to have, uh, knowing whether you're going to uh, at least put one of the township board members on there, mm -mm. or if you're going to uh, put somebody else on there, but we need uh, a quorum by probably the end of February. Carl Siebold is an individual I had for the road committee. He's one. He is one. That's correct. That's a start. Um, George has two committees. He made it George Baker, and that's something that the Planning Commission had looked at. They would like to see George stay with the Planning Committee. George really likes the roads. I've talked with him a number of times. I'm not working in a total vacuum here. There are people that I have talked to, and some are very upset at me when I say one person, one committee. They like... It's a very small stipend, but it is a stipend and it is a power piece that goes with it. When they serve on two or three committees, it's the same concept, the same ideas, the same person. All right, I'm not gonna rehash it, but that's where I'm at. Yes, the road committee is, and yes, you do have contract coming up. That is one person, but it's a start. There's so, give you a quorum. So there we go. That's, that's part of the issue. So clarification for Ryan is that yes, I can look at those, I will look at it, but I do need some assurance. And Trustee Amariji had said it, he's speaking not only I think for himself, but for others, that that will be looked at. And that's all I'm asking. I'm not asking that you automatically rubber stamp that you look at these qualifications, you look at who these people are, and you look to see what it is that you're appointing. Now, again, you're gonna run into a snag sometimes because someone's gonna term limit out and may not be reappointed to that or appointed to that committee. That's hard, it's very hard. And I know that that's a little tough and that's a whole new paradigm shift in a sense, but it's something that needs to be done. So I don't know if I clarified that or if I muddied it up. What do you think, Trustee Bliss? Did you understand it or not? I hear Did you I muddy it up? Clear. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I heard you loud and clear. Okay, good. So there we are. Next thing with Her our- Marie, meeting. yes. That Treasurer Wisselosser, Yes. Um, you know, you talk about all these different committees. You talk about the road committee. You talk about the even the DDA, as far as that goes. That that'll go away. Yeah, that's that's a stretch. But we talk about the road committee, the DDA. You talk about the planning commission. This is imperative. Why you need to have double people, because you need to have somebody from the planning commission on the road committee. You need to have somebody from the planning commission involved in knowing what the CIP is. Every year you take and you. The, the planning commission, to my knowledge, looks at the CIP. We actually look and we extend out for years going down the road to see what we're going to do. There's no place for politics in this, Murray. 
all there is, there is, all there is, yes. you, you put four hundred thousand dollars of the public's money in the roads every year, and that's probably one of the best things that the people that live out there in them roads like is having a decent road to live on, to have their value, their home on, and everything else. So once again, I'm going to throw it out there again, folks. We yeah. are the second highest SEV contributor of taxes to this county. And we look pretty stupid doing what we're doing right now. I don't have a problem telling you that at all. Just the way I have a problem here again. Looking. You need to take and think about this because these people that are set on these committees have knowledge. They've already been through it. They know what they're doing. I'm not saying you shouldn't have some new people on there. Great. Have three or four new people on there. But you probably ought to take and appoint some people that know what's going on and when you're talking about the kind of money that we spend, that we roll out and we put into the roads, we put into all the other processes that go on here, you have a, you have a major process for the roads. I'll throw it right out there at you, right point blank. In 2022, yep. Webster Road, right up and down the road right here, we're eligible for a $2 million grant. And when we can get matching money and we can do that, the DDA should be involved in that. The planning commission should be involved in that. And the road committee should be involved in that. And all these people have been involved in it. The only one that hasn't been involved in it is you. And you need to take and get yourself educated as far as what you're doing here, because you're talking about tax dollars. And I don't know about you, but I'll go and I'll do a, a study if you need to. But I can rest assured there's not too many people that's on this township board that pays more taxes than I do. And I, I don't mind paying them at all, but I, I want my money spent. So I want things to be happening. I want things to be done. And it's your responsibility for you to sit there and tell us that you're not going to take and do any more appointments is disgusting. And I hope the people that voted for you are real proud of you because I'm not. Well, you did, number one, you didn't vote for me. Number two, I didn't say that. You don't know that. There's curtains you, you on voting did, booths. Yeah, right. You, you didn't, I did not say that I was not going to do anything. All Thank I'm you. saying to you is that it's very important, these committees, these committees are the backbone for the township. Everybody knows that. Institutional knowledge is crucial, but so is new blood. Do your job, Marie. I do my job. I'm sorry you don't think so. You've said that before. I, I can't help it. I'm here every day. I, I yes, you are. So am I. So am I. But I'm not going to argue that with you. That's not you and I to have a, you know, There's fighting. There's no room for politics argument. and people's tax dollars. End of story for a local government. That's my yeah. opinion. They need to be, they need to be taken care of. They're, they're, their committees need to be working. There's no reason not to have these committees working. For us to be this close to a road contract and not even have a seated, a seated uh, road committee board is disgusting. We're the laughing stock of this, of this county right now, and I'm tired of being with it. There's nobody in this office that deals with the county courthouse more than I do. Maybe the police chief, but that's about the size of it. I talk to people every day. I, they wanna know what's going on. They wanna know where, where we're moving ahead. You, once again, this township, you are very, very fortunate to have a township under your control, Marie, that has as high SEV value that contributes to our counties, what this does. And the politics needs to end for everybody. You it's need never to been appoint, politics. You need, you need to take and appoint the people who do their jobs and are, are knowledgeable and know how to do their jobs. You need board members from the board of trustees on these committees so they can be a liaison to take and talk to the, the boards and the committees to give them ideas of what's going on. And we need to quit bickering. And we need to quit having these little these little problems that what we're having here, this pushback. That's why I think you and I talked about this the other day. We need to quit having pushback. We need to move forward and we need to get some stuff done. And the only way you're going to do that is you need to start appointing people and getting your other people involved and move forward. It's always it's always wonderful, you know, in, in talking with you that and with the rest of you, this and I'm gonna put this out there. So here you go, Steve. You and I are like two bullheads you know, that come together. But part of this, it all, it's, you all seem to lay it at my feet. And I find that really interesting because I have attempted to produce and you have attempted to block each time. So there are no politics in this. There never has been. 
politics in it. I can't say that for everything that you do or Jason's done or others. I can't say, or Ryan, I can't say that. For me, politics is not where it's at. If it were, trust me, it'd be a whole different ball game. But politics are not in it. Bath Township is in it. And yes, people are asking. They've been asking. Actually, they've been asking since November. But, you know, it gets more intense, more, more going. But we're going to, from my standpoint, this has been very productive. From your standpoint, I don't know because you guys don't communicate. Ryan says this, I should be, you know, emailing everybody and, you know, including, but you can't necessarily do that. There's plenty who come in and out all the time. So I, I don't know what the answer is to it. I just know that there's issues. What, so I want to, I want to change it. We'll bring it back if you want to. We'll bring it back, you know, the next meeting and we'll continue the discussion with the committees. I think that's a great idea. That's entirely up to you. You could accept it, reject it, whatever you want to do. I want to move on to the minutes because not in the minutes, something that's not reflected that I've had a question about, and that's when people will testify. For example, we had Fred that testified, we had Will that testified, we had somebody who else was, there was somebody else that, oh, Anne came in and talked. But we don't know who that was. All it says is that three people testified for public statement. What I'm looking for is a name that that individual was there. I don't want to go into what was said or who. All I need to know as I'm reading that is who was it that testified? Who was it that came in for public statement that took the time and the energy to be able to put themselves out there? So I don't think we need any kind of movement on that. I'm just bringing it up that is for information so that it reflects on our public statements when somebody comes in that we can say, Will White stated, you know, Anne Elsenheimer, she came in and she talked. That's, that's it. That's all I'm looking for is a name. So think about it. My next one that I have, this one, where's Kev oh, Kevin Douglas? There he is. For information, and we will have to vote on this, Kevin's looking for a grant. You want to fill us in, Kevin? Yeah, good evening, everybody. My name Thank is Kevin you. Douglas. I'm the fire marshal. Um, so for those of you board members that served prior to taking over November, um, in the past, we've went to firehouse subs yeah. um, for a grant. So we're going to them again. They're a no match grant. So the township doesn't have to put forth any money, but we are going to apply for ABI gear, which is the act of violence incidents. So that if we were to have to go into some sort of incident where there's shootings or anything like that, um, our members will be protected. Um, again, it's a no match. We don't have to put forth any money. Um, but other than that, does I don't have anything else really. Okay. Nope, that sounds good to me, Kevin. What, is there any questions? Because what this is is informational. You will have to vote next week only because like Kevin, he didn't say, but I'll say it. The 17th is the close date for the grant. So we're meeting on the 16th. So he's gonna be able to, in a short time, turn around to be able to say, yes, my board accepted it and we can move on. Trustee Amarigi, go ahead. I, just a small question. Uh, when was the last time we uh, received the grant from the Firehouse Subs Foundation? Do you know the answer to that one, Kevin? He's muted. Oh, he is muted. There you go. Thank you. Ask you, it again. Um, Jason, I heard your question. Um, okay. We have yet to actually uh, be awarded. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Any other questions for Kevin? Trustee Benzie, you got a question? No. Okay. All right. Again, we're going to need to have a vote by the 16th, which is when we meet, because Kevin says 17th is when the grant's up. 
So that short window, he'll turn around very quickly and be able to let them know that yes, it was accepted. Go ahead, Al. Does that give him enough time to get the paperwork into them? Kevin? It should. Um, we'll have everything all set so that as long as the board approves it, the night of the 16th, we'll turn it in on the 17th. We have till five o'clock on the 17th. So. Thank you, Kevin. No problem. Thank you. All right. Good deal. We have items for action. Oh, I'm sorry, well, Madam Supervisor. first I better. Go ahead. Trustee Bliss, go ahead. I think we skipped number two in the agenda. Um, Under organization. Are you talking about items for discussion? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no. That's what we've been spending all that time on. We were talking about access to the township attorney. Yes, that's the organization. Oh, for the access for the attorney? Yes. Oh, that was... Oh, that information. I did find that out. I had put on there for myself for notes. No, it was answered for me. There is no policy. Okay. Okay. So can you inform us on uh, what you found out? Well, Karen wrote me an email. You want, to, you want me to read it, Karen, or do you want to go ahead and... According... No need to read it. Um, okay. It, uh, past practice has been that the um, superintendent um, is able to contact the township attorney um, at that person's discretion. Mm -hmm. um, the assessor also contacts the tax tribunal attorney that represents us um, to work on tax tribunals. And any staff member that might need assistance, such as the ordinance compliance officer or the planner uh, that needs to contact the attorney will seek permission from the superintendent to do so. Thank you. Yes, that's been part of, but there is no policy per se. And that's what she said. There's no policy passed by the board of trustees for contacting the attorney. Was someone asking for the policy? I'm just curious how it made it. Yes, I did. The agenda. Yes, I asked for if there was a policy okay. for contacting the attorney. I didn't know if there was or there wasn't, and she answered. And what she's telling you, just for clarification, if you need it, there is no policy, but this has been what has been done without a policy. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, all right. Any other questions? Okay, it doesn't look like it. All right, we have items for action. Nick, you're on. <laughs> Is he still there? Yes, and okay, I am on. There you are. Um, good evening, everyone. So uh, we've seen this before. This is uh, the special use permit for Sunrise Forest, the multi-use structure containing uh, medical marijuana provisioning, uh, grow and processing, along with a drive-through coffee shop. Uh, the applicant is available to answer any questions. And if there are any questions that they um, are not able to, I'm certainly willing to do so. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna need a motion. I'll make a motion. Okay, Trustee Bensky, thank you. Second. Is there a second? What is the motion? Do you want me to repeat? The motion is, well, go ahead, Nick. I don't, I'm taking your thunder. That's okay. Uh, my understanding is the motion would be, and Joe, please correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. I, my understanding is the motion would be to uh, approve the special use permit for Sunrise Forest. Yes. Thank you. I'll second that. Okay. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> All right, we need a record roll call vote. Mr. Rosecrans? Yes. Mr. Wiswasser? Yes. Mr. Almarigi? Yes. Mr. Benchy? Yes. Mr. Fewens Bliss? Yes. Ms. Howe? Yes.
Okay. Nick, we're on the second. Yep. So the okay. second part of, of this would be the uh, marijuana operations license for Sunrise Forest in order to uh, conduct business of a medical marijuana grow processing and provisioning center. Um, that information is available in the packet and uh, by state law, some of that information is redacted, but uh, members of the board have access to that information if they'd like to see it by stopping into the township office. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. <laughs> I'm good at that. that. All right, do I have a second? Oh, well, do you want the motion repeated? The planner? Teleski, uh, do you want to? Okay. I'm seeing head shakes, so I'm not sure I need to repeat it, but it's re recommending I'm, approval of the medical marijuana license. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second. Discussion? Record roll call vote. Do you want to split? Yes. Mr. Rosecrans? Yes. Mr. Wiswasser? Yes. Mr. Almerigi? Yes. Mr. Benzi? Yes. Ms. Howe? Yes. One more to go. All right. I guess third time's a charm here. Uh, this is the, the second reading and adoption of the zoning ordinance 31.67. It's an amendment to our zoning ordinance to allow for office uses in our low density and medium density residential zoning districts with a special use permit. Do I have a motion? I'll move approval of the second reading and adoption of zoning ordinance 31.67. I'll second it. Thank you guys. Good job. Discussion? Record roll call vote. Mr. Westwasser? Yeah. Mr. Almerigi? Yes. Mr. Benzi? Yes. Mr. Thielen Bliss? Yes. Mr. Rosecrans? Yes. Ms. Howe? Yes. Great. Thank you. Good job. That was a long time coming, as I understand. All right, Superintendent's report number 16. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'd like to inform the board that our police and firefighters have received their second round of vaccinations. Um, our essential staff uh, has requested vaccinations from the Michi Mid Michigan Department of um, uh, Wow Community Health. I was for <laughs> blanked on that, um, and we will await a time that um, the rest of us can be vaccinated as well if there are shots available. Um, I would like you to know that the liability insurance grant that we applied for, um, I believe it's a couple of months ago now, was denied, um, but we will proceed with purchasing an electrostatic sprayer and disinfectant that will continue to keep uh, the offices, the police department, and the fire department safe um, from COVID. Um, I think that's a smart investment and something that we need to invest in. We've been um, hiring a contractor who has done an amazing job, but each time we do that, it's several hundred dollars to have that done. Um, and I think we have very capable staff that could do that for us. To the point of the senior center, um, I agree with a lot of what Ms. Gardy uh, spoke on tonight. Um, the group of seniors that we have at the senior center that attend from both Bath and outside of Bath is a, is a critical population that is extremely susceptible to COVID and it is important that they be vaccinated against it. It is also critical that we have um, our plans in place to make sure that when we do open the senior center that it is safe and that we don't um, have ongoing exposures that continue to cause us to open and close and open and close. Um, that could cause a great deal of confusion in the community as to whether we're open or not, um, especially when people are um, often relying on the food that they receive at the senior center. Um, Mary Horde and I, she is the senior center cook, and I have been um, watching very closely a lot of recommendations from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, the CDC, um, the Mid-Michigan District Health Department, um, and uh, local senior centers that are operating at this time. 
Um, it is not a decision that we take lightly, nor is the processes that we need to put in place to make sure our staff and our seniors are safe once we do reopen. Um, so we will continue to monitor those conditions and those safeguards and put policies in place, um, as well as um, the hiring of a senior center director. It, that is not a full-time position, that is a part-time position in its current form. Um, and we will also need to be hiring a senior center assistant cook. You'll recall that our previous cook got a a uh, wonderful job over in DeWitt at a senior housing um, a living facility, excuse me, and we'll need to replace that person as well in order to make the amount of meals that we make on a daily basis and a weekly basis, um, we have to have two, two cooks um, at the minimum. So we will be looking at those um, recommendations in order to make sure that we're staying healthy and keeping people safe, um, looking at getting vaccinations to keep our employees safe and then um, opening hopefully up to seniors. Um, I can't say when that will be. Tri, um, the Tri-County Regional um, Senior Advisory Group has said that um, they don't recommend congregate meal sites opening up until at least stage six, but we continue to monitor that as the state continues to open and change its yes. recommendations. So I believe we're at stage four at this time um, but we'll continue to monitor that information so that we are doing everything in the best, best interest of our residents. Are there any questions? The only one I had you already answered. Okay. Perfect. I didn't know what stage six was. Um, yeah, it's, it's it, the governor has different six different stages on yes. the reopening of Michigan. Yep. So yep. currently we're in stage four, I believe. That's okay. That's the stage you're talking. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is there any other questions? I got one for Karen. Okay. Go ahead, Al. Okay. Um, the soap dispensers and the uh, the hand drying towels mm -hmm. or whatever we're using. Yes. Uh, we've got to uh, make sure they're now touch. Yes. Yes, we will um, be looking at that equipment as part of our recommendations from the CDC and making sure there's adequate um, hand washing, um, a station that I'm looking to install, as well as having um, adequate sanitizer and masks available for everyone as well. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, it doesn't appear that there's any other questions? So we'll move on to 17, which is public statement two. Um, oh, hang on, remember. Judy, got your hand up. Um, I, I had someone else with their hand up before. Um, okay. There is a phone number ending in 040. You can go ahead and unmute by dialing star six. Hello, uh, Will Tyler White. Uh, it was a uh, good discussion on uh, committee assignments. Uh, I was hoping there would be a little better resolution. So I still do not uh, see any real plan or a structured form on how uh, assignments are being vetted uh, or applied for or, or uh, recommended. I should note that this uh, board of trustees had a vacancy and it chose to uh, uh, fill the vacancy with the person it wanted. So why can't all the other boards and committees fill their vacant positions with the people they want? Uh, that's just a question, uh, not asking for an answer. But I, I believe uh, Steve and, and uh, uh, Treasurer Witzwasser and uh, Trustee Amrigi and Trustee uh, Pewins Bliss all stressed how important it is to get these positions filled, especially the Road Commission, the DDA, uh, and the uh, Senior Services. Well, I think you get they have a quorum there now. But the point is, these people spend tax money, and there's fiduciary duties on these boards that have to be met. Deadlines that if you miss or you make a mistake. It costs money. So it's very important that you have people on those boards with the 
institutional memory. I, I notice um, several board members, uh, when they join committees, get training, which they need to do. I see Mr. Almarigi took several course, courses when he was appointed to the Planning Commission. And that's good. That's every, everyone on every board should be taking classes. Right. But that's the point. If you, so it, it takes a while. Anyway, I don't want to go past the three minutes. Uh, I appreciate your listening, and I hope you get some more people appointed soon. Thank and and still asking for a public town hall meeting so you can talk to the public. Thank you. Would anyone else like to make a public statement at this I think time? Judy. Judy, go ahead and unmute. Thank you. Thank you for your time this evening. Um, I hope there's not a misunderstanding. The Senior Services Advisory Board understands that we cannot open the Senior Center, serve meals, have activities. Our request is to hire a Senior Service, a Senior Center Director so we can begin working towards opening wh whenever that is, but also so that we can begin a campaign to get our seniors vaccinated so it's safe when we do open. Thank you, Judy. Thad, I think I saw your hand. Thad, go ahead and unmute. Hi, thank you. I just wanted to say briefly that I appreciate uh, uh, the unanimous support for the license application and the special use permit this evening for Sunrise Forest. Uh, I believe our next step is to start applying for building permits and continue to invest in the site. Uh, and our goal is to get the folks to work there in the community uh, at our site as soon as possible. So just want you to know that, that we'll be working diligently and that we appreciate it. Thanks for your time. If anyone else would like to make a public statement at this time, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. You can use the raise hand function on the Zoom app or physically raise your hand if you have your video turned on. I do not see anyone additional. Okay, Taylor, thank you. I don't see, well, what does it mean when you have these little phones up? Those are people that have dialed in, but the, if they have not raised their hand, then that indicates that they do not wish to make a public statement. Okay. Oh, they're listening. Gotcha. Okay. All right. I guess we'll close public statements. Go to um, our 18, which is board of member comments. Trustee Benzie. I'm all set. Thanks everybody for coming. Okay. Trustee Rosencrantz. Oh, I have nothing except thank you for okay. listening in. And we appreciate your, your knowledge that you try to push through to us. And uh, we try to listen to you. <laughs> okay, Trustee Treasurer Wiswasser. Hey, thank you, Marie. I have a yep. few things since I'm the treasurer. I'm going to talk about money, imagine that. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this committee thing, and I'm going to elaborate on this a little bit for people, those who, who are maybe in our, our video town hall meeting here. Uh, Webster Road, roads, very important to have people on the road committee, especially people, as I talk, who are multifunctional people who are involved in the planning, planning process, maybe even as well as maybe the DDA process, but uh, you got $2 million grant coming up in 2022 out here in right. West Road that they've been down here and they've talked to everybody about it. But I don't hear anybody being concerned about it, but here we can't even pass a, a contract. We can't get enough people to get a road contract together. Your roads, we've spent, Marie, $400,000 and anybody else wants to listen to me, $400,000 a year for the roads for quite some time now. And there's mm. nothing more important than these people who have to pay these high tax dollars and everything else. So they like to drive home on a decent road and not get their car all messy. Um, as far as the budgeting in, 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 of the township and the CIP, the Planning Commission and other board members are very, very valuable. That's why you need seated board members on some of these committees because they know what's going on. They're more familiar with the budget and the day-to-day, -day, the week-to-week and month-to-month expenses than anybody else going. 
the DDA, the use of the tax dollars that we capture, we capture so much money from the from the DDA district every year and it gets put into a special fund. You have positive capture, negative capture. We, we retain the positive capture. That money can be spent on, on all kinds of different projects and things to improve the downtown development district as it sets. It could be spent on some of this road money over here on Webster Road. It could be used to enhance that. That's a very important thing as well. Um, and it needs to be looked at. I don't care whether you like the DDA or you don't like the DDA, but I know you all like money, so you ought to be thinking about it. Uh, the planning commission, the budgeting and, and, and everything that goes along with, the, the, with that. There's dollars involved in that as well. The CIP is, is just, it's, it's tremendous of what we have to deal with and, and plan for the future. And you need people, not only new people, new blood, but you also need people who understand what they did in the past so they can explain it. And I guess last but not least, and, and I don't even know why they're last on my list here for this, this thing, but public safety, for God's sakes. We have public safety here that's, that's second to none around here. We have a police department that has a $1.7 million budget. We have a fire department that has a, a excess of a $650,000 a year budget. I've never heard too many people complain about our public safety and our first responders or anything else, or heard them complain about living in a community that provides this or paying their taxes. Their millage gets renewed year after year after year. They deserve to have somebody from the township board on their committee, and they deserve to have their committee up and running and going. Bottom line. I'm not going to stomp up and down on my soapbox anymore, but I am going to say this. The vouchers are on the counter up here, and everybody's got to sign them this next week, and, and I hope you come in and do it. I hope you call me about the auditors. I'm going to do my due diligence, and I'm going to look into everything I told you I'd look into, and I'll have answers and questions and be ready for a, a acceptance of somebody's contract on the next meeting on the 16th of February. Thank you, everybody, for what you do, and thank you, the people who listen. Okay, Jason Armrigi, trustee. I'm all set, thank you. Okay. Trustee Bliss. Uh, yeah, you all know me. I always have something to say. Uh, always. That's I heard a lot issue. of folks at the beginning of the meeting talking about uh, communication and wanting to hear from the board. I hope what you all are seeing is that there isn't a function within the meeting for us to sort of turn outwardly and just have a conversation with the public. So it's not that we don't want to talk to you and answer your questions. The function of the business meeting doesn't allow us to. Uh, and, you know, some of the suggestions that have that were put forward coming up with the presentation and, and things like that, I think you can also see we're not all on the same page. So no one of us could come up with some sort of presentation or some sort of reason why we've all voted the way we did, because I think you're going to get seven different answers. So just like the legislature down the road in Lansing and Congress in D.C., if you want to hear why individual board members are voting the way they are or what they think, Unfortunately, you have to contact us each independently so we can answer that for ourselves. So I would really encourage folks who are interested, uh, call me, email me. I've got a Facebook page. Uh, feel free to send me a message. I will respond to everything, even crit critique. Even if you want to call me names, I'll respond very respectfully to you. <laughs> Uh, just very open if you want to hear things. I've also heard folks in the community say, hey, you were mentioned on this other Facebook page, uh, the same page that Fred brought up last meeting. I, I just hope people know that that page is not a place for you to get formal response from people from the township. Uh, you know, I'm not skimming there on a daily basis. Uh, I know Marie has been tagged in posts before and she hasn't responded to that. I just don't think that's the place for us to engage with folks. So if you want to, to hear from us, I think you have to come to us directly. I know that means more work, but unfortunately it's a function of the system. As we keep moving forward, I hope we ask ourselves what problems we're trying to solve. Uh, I wanna make sure we're not again, dismantling systems that are currently functioning, uh, that we're not 
engaging in conversation about things that we actually don't disagree on, that there isn't a problem to be solved. So in some of these areas that we're revisiting, we continue to talk about things that nothing's broken. So why are we trying to fix it? There are other pieces of our township that need our attention right now. And ultimately, and I've said this directly to the supervisor, so I'm not speaking out of school when I say it here, it's a responsibility of that position to communicate with the rest of us. It's the leader of the board. And so when I say I'm hoping for communication, I mean that, and I mean it in good faith. I'll return phone calls, I'll return emails. We may not agree, but we still have to communicate. Being the chair of the board, that is a function. And if, if that's not the function that we're looking for, uh, you know, there are other positions on the board that might have been a good, better fit. Communicating with all of us, I think, is really, really critical. And, and frankly, just being honest and asking us what it is you want us to do so we can make the decision. Do we support that agenda or do we not support that agenda? Mm -hmm. I just have felt a little unsure of what the agenda is that I'm being asked to buy into. So with that, thanks for everyone for sticking with us another long meeting and, and uh, calling in and, and watching on Facebook. All right, I guess it's my turn. I'm gonna start with Steve's and, and I'll try to make it quick so we won't have such a long meeting. The Webster Road Corridor. You know, it's kind of a funny thing Steve brought this up because our treasurer, from the standpoint that understanding what a DDA really does, works with dilapidated areas and makes them taxable, brings them up to speed. My understanding is that there are two people that are going to really benefit from being able to improve that entrance. And I believe that's what you're talking about. Um, if I'm wrong, please say so, because I don't understand the Webster Road other than that entrance is what has come to my attention. DDA money is, it's not that it can't be spent there because it can, and you're talking about $200,000 worth, but it can be spent there. The problem is that's not a good sense of DDA money to be spent there because it is going to be developed one way or another. Either I'd brother it will do it or Kessler will do it. Um, I'm tickled pink we're getting the food bank there. He already has you know, designed it in such a way of road access to get to it. Yes, you are going to have more there, understanding that. Um, but our tax dollars, we need to look at that. And I know that's your job and you're very proud of your job, which you should be because you do a good job. Um, but I do question, you know, and that's not a political entity, that's a personal opinion. DDAs have a specific role in a community. And that role usually is to develop and make that community better. That's always the decision as to whether you should or shouldn't. I am on the DDA. I am one of those that are mandated by law to be there. Um, my upbringing, so to speak, on DDAs is a little different than what has been projected as a DDA in this township. So that's a learning curve for me to be able to see it. Um, as for the board members, you know, sitting on the committees, I still am not 100% with that. I understand what you're saying. Um, many times, I guess what it means is a board member needs to then be called upon to make his own, his or her uh, announcement or their study as to what took place, their, their commitment to what they're doing. Does that make any sense? Um, so if you have to make a statement every meeting, then so be that, if that's what that is. No, go ahead. Marie, I, yes. I, I'm not sure that you understand. Webster Road oh. is all the way from Spags to the expressway. That's correct. Not just down by the- Well, it actually goes farther than that. No, yeah, but that's as far as they go is to the bridge. Okay. That other one was done a couple of years ago. Over the bridge and into Park Lake. Oh, that that Webster, yes, that Webster is, is along. That's what I said, Webster corridor. That's what I. If that wasn't right, then I needed to know that. If you're looking at Webster Road in itself, 
you've got a cemetery, you've got up to Clark Road, that kind of improvement that needs to be done. There's no, there's no question. That's part of it. Okay. Okay. Nope. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, when he talks, when Steve talked about the CIPs, it was kind of interesting. I've been in this community over 20 years and your capital improvement plans it's really kind of an interesting piece. I'm not sure I know where it's at. I know we have Wiswasser Park, which is an awesome addition to our community. That was a CIP. Frankly, I think that's other than the senior center and that was done with a grant. So there was a 50-50 a share with them. Other than that, CIPs haven't really existed um, no matter how many and how much we talk about them. They're not, we don't fund money for CIPs. Um, as for the public safety, fire police, you couldn't be more correct. I think we're very fortunate to have public safety here in Bath. Understanding that when people pay their taxes, they're paying their taxes for the F meaning fire um, because that's what our millage is for. That needs to be really understood because we can contract heaven help us if we ever do, I hope not because I like our police department, but we can contract with the sheriff's department to be able to do police work here. We don't because we like our police department and our fire department, absolutely correct. So that has nothing to do, as for the committee, the police and fire, and I was a member of the police and fire committee at one time, they only meet like three, four times a year. So I'm not real sure and I think they'll tell you they become somewhat obsolete according to what I'm hearing because our police department has a Facebook and our fire department will now have a Facebook. Those numbers that they tell us, they will put on that. Christy does a great job with being able to give us a report, whoever wants them. So yeah, our public safety is awesome, but our committee is something that needs to be looked at. Having said that, when Ryan talks about the community, the function of the business meetings, you know, uh, in special meeting, we can call a special meeting. If we call a special meeting, you can make it into a town hall meeting. So it isn't that we can't do that. It's a question of how you want to do it. At our special meeting, we ended up having to have, because of the open meetings, you've got to have a, your clerk you need to have it noticed, you need to have all, but that's still a town meeting. So I'm not sure saying we can't do that is necessarily right because we can do it if we work on it, we have to figure out how to do it. I think Will brings up a really good point of being able to figure out what we're all doing and where we're at. I think that makes sense. The community has a right to know that. Um, as for communication, Again, I think you're putting that at my feet and I, I don't mind it being at my feet. That, that's fine. I'll, I'll take it any day as long as we understand that's a two-way street. You have been really good, Ryan, about emails and questions and you and I go back and forth. We cannot tell each other how to vote or what to do. That's not something that you and I do. The communication has been with the committees, it's been with what's happening, and we've had this discussion through the email, okay? Jason, he's at times, which by the way, I need to ask you, what are your plans with the planning commission? I, I'm out of place with this, but it wasn't asked before. What have you determined to do with that? I've already resigned. Oh, okay, I didn't know that, no one told me, so I had no clue. So you have resigned from the planning commission. So that leaves it open, an opening. Okay, that makes it really helpful to say the least. So anyway, the communication, so thank you. That was a thought that was on my head and I kind of threw it out there. The communication part that you speak about, Ryan, it is a two-way street. It's not a one-way street. So that needs to be understood. So when you try to, to say, it's all my fault, I should be, you know, e emailing and et cetera. Again, that's a two-way street. And that's never been a two-way street. You and I have a two-way street. Jason and I have had two-way streets before. Joe's getting better at a two-way street. 
Al, there hasn't been any. You know, Steve, I see him every day. He can yell and scream and holler all he wants, which is okay. You know, that's that's his job. That's what he's supposed to do. I get it. But don't, I don't think it's right to leave the impression that it's all the supervisor's responsibility with the legislative body or our board, you know, our trustee, our board of trustees is a difference that adds our treasurer, our clerk and myself, but you four are the crucial piece to this township. We have to vote on it. There's no question we have to come together. There has to be communication, but you four are the really the movers and shakers of what happens with it. For the rest of us, we kind of have to go on where you're at and what your thoughts are and where you're at with the community because that's your job. And it is a legislative position, whether that term is used or not, it is your responsibility. So again, for me, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. So that's the end of mine, I'll get off my soapbox and everybody else has spoken. So do we have a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. Okay. I'll, do we have a second? Who's the second? Was that what you? Oh, thank you. As long as Karen's got it and Brenda's got it, it's okay. All right. We need to vote and because you won't do the unanimous consent issue. So vote. Mr. Rosecrans? Yes. Mr. Fumes Bliss? Yes. Mr. Benzie? Yes. Mr. Almarigi? Yes. He's getting better. Mr. Wiswasser? Yeah. Ms. Howard? Yes. So we are adjourned. It's quarter, well, it's, actually it's 11 minutes after eight. So thank you all. <laughs>